Hello everyone, how are you? How's everything? I hope everything is going well with you. And today I'm going to continue telling you about the Laplace transform. So in the past few sessions, we told you how we go from time domain to the Laplace domain. And we tried to go over different types of examples and try to apply different techniques. Also, we learned about the properties that we need to use to make sure that we can go uh, from time domain to Laplace domain for any different type of function. Today, we're going to start to talk about the inverse Laplace transform. What does it mean? It's easy. You remember I was always telling you that Laplace transform is like getting on a bus means that you go on a bus you would solve your problem inside the bus which makes it easier and the bus takes you to the destination but at this, the destination you have to know how to get off the bus so getting on the bus is like taking your input to the Laplace domain the movement of the bus is like you're solving your problem in the Laplace domain getting off the bus is like coming back from the Laplace domain to the time domain. This is what we're gonna start to talk about today. So as we can expect, we show the inverse Laplace with L minus one. L minus one of F of S will give us F of T. You remember before L of F of T was giving us F of S. L minus one of F of S gives us f of t. There is a formula for this Laplace inverse, which is this one, d1 over 2 pi j, the integral of f of s to the power of st dt. But very much like the Laplace formula itself, we almost never use this formula to find the inverse Laplace. So how do we find the inverse Laplace? Using the table. The way that we're using the table to go from time to the Laplace domain, we can use the table to come back from the Laplace domain to the time domain. Let's look at a simple example. Imagine you want to find the Laplace transform of F, the Laplace inverse of f of s in which f of s is 1 over s plus 2 over s plus 1. You can see how easy this is. 1 over s. What was the Laplace transform of ut? It was 1 over s. So the Laplace inverse of 1 over s will be ut. Yes. How about 2 over s plus 1? So it's also like 1 over s with two differences. First, it's multiplied by 2. Second, it's shifted in the frequency side. So the shift in the frequency was multiplication by e in the time domain. And this time multiplication by 2 is also like a linearity. So it's the answer is going to be 2 e to the power of minus t ut. If you're not 100% sure where it came from, look at it the other way around. Imagine you want to find the, Lapla the Laplacian of this one, 2e to the power of minus t ut. First, you say Laplacian of ut is 1 over s. Then, when I have e to the power of minus t, it means any s that I have over there, I need to uh, make it s plus 1. Because I have minus 1. Remember, we're switching the sign. And also, there is 2 here, so it's going to be 2 over s plus 1. So we found it as simple as that. Let's look at this example. g of s is 3 s plus 1 over s plus 4. This one, we can go one step to simplify it. I can write it like this. 3 times s plus 4 minus 11 over s plus 4. Right? It's like you have uh, in because he, he, you have added 11 and deducted 11 to the numerator here. So it becomes like this. Then 3s plus 4 over s plus 4, you can simplify it and write it just 3. 
minus 11 over s plus 4 okay so 3 you remember this Laplacian of delta t was 1 so the inverse Laplace of 1 will be delta t so the inverse Laplace of 3 will be 3 delta t how about this one this one will be 11 do you have a frequency shift of 4 so we're gonna have e to the power of minus 4 t on this side so it will be 11 e to the power of minus 40 ut now let's look at it the other way around if you have this function you want to find the laplacian of that okay you will say 3 delta t the laplacian will be 3 this one 11 e to the power of minus 40 ut the laplacian will be okay 11 and this minus 4 will make any s s plus 4 and ut is 1 over s so it's going to be 1 over s plus 4 so it's going to be 11 over s plus 4 see it's straightforward just try to uh, practice it on the paper yourself you will see that it's actually nothing but sometimes you might see some functions in s domain that might look a bit more complicated like this function here f of s which is 20 s squared plus 30 s plus 20 over s times s plus 2 so how do we find the way to find the inverse Laplace of this one so I'll tell you step by step and then we'll practice this more and more look first we tell ourselves that I know how to find the Laplace inverse of 1 over s and I know how to find it if it was 1 over s plus 2 but when these two are multiplied by each other in the denominator my only choice to find the Laplace inverse is to separate them from each other so you will remember the techniques of partial fraction I'm sure you have done that before in your calculus and in your differential equations but we will do it again here so I by looking at it I can tell that this s times s plus 2 was the common denominator of a fraction with the denominator of s and a fraction with the denominator of s plus 2 and since the order of the numerator and the denominator are equal or both two we're going to have a constant k as well so let's go to action first thing we want to find what is the value of k what do we do we find the limit of this function when s goes to the infinity when s goes to the infinity of course this is the lower orders they wouldn't matter anymore the only the highest order matters so here the highest order is a square 20 square here is just a square so the limit will be 20 right it's going to be 20 over 1 so k will be 20 done so in this combination k is already found to be 20 then you want to find a how to find a there is a method called covering method that I will explain it now the basics of it and then I'll try to tell you the easier way to go over it in the next sessions but now here is this one is also easy what do we do look we have two sides here right we will multiply both sides by s because we want to buy because we want to find a which is the numerator of the fraction that the denominator is s so we multiply it by the corresponding denominator which is s so we multiply this side by s and this side by s this side this side so what do we have this side will become 20 s square plus 30 s plus 20 over s plus 2 this s will be eliminated because we just multiplied by s this side k will become ks a over s will become s and b over s plus 2 will become bs over s plus 2 then i will replace s with 0 on both sides 
if we replace s with 0 on this side this term will be 0 this term will be 0 this this 20 and here 0 plus 2 is going to be 2 so here is going to be 20 over 2 which is 10 this side k times s is going to be 0 because we're replacing s with 0 a plus a this one will also be 0 so a will become 10 look a became 10 straightforward then we want to determine b I guess now you can imagine what should we do we should multiply both sides by s plus 2 now right so if we multiply this side by s plus 2 this is what we're gonna get 20 s square plus 30 s plus 20 over s if we multiply this side by s plus 2 it's gonna be k times s plus 2 plus a times s plus 2 over s plus b s now we replace s with minus 2 look I just show you something from the previous one as well why do we why we replace it with zero because zero is the root of this denom is of the denominator here when we are s when we are s plus two the root is gonna be minus two so we replace s with minus two on this side when you replace it with minus 2, it's going to be 20 times minus 2 squared. It's going to be 20 times 4, 8. Plus 30 as 30 times minus 2 is like minus 60. Plus 20 over minus 2. This side, if you replace s with minus 2, k times minus 2 plus 2, 0, so it's going to become 0. Here, again, to replace it with minus 2 this one will become 0 so here we're gonna have b times s so minus 2 times s what did we have um, uh, minus 2 times b so here we're gonna have minus 2 times b so minus 2b will be equal to 40 you agree because here we had 40 after we replaced s with minus 2 so minus 2 b equals 40 it means b will be minus 20 so we can simplify the whole fraction into this 20 plus k plus 10 over s or this was a minus 20 over s plus 2 where this one was b so now if i want to find the laplace inverse of this it is very easy to find the laplace inverse of 20 is 20 delta t Laplace inverse of 10 over s will be 10 ut. The Laplace inverse of 20 over s plus 2 will be 20 e to the power of minus 2t ut. Remember it was the frequency shift. So I'm not gonna uh, say anything else this session. I think it was enough for one session. Please go over this video more than once to understand that what happened and if still you had more questions come back to me in class tomorrow or on thursday and i'll explain more that what did we do and how did we do the partial fraction thank you very much have a beautiful day take care see you